just okay right now navier stokes equation the steady case or unsteady case what kind of problems would you have when dealing when after discretization when you want to build the matrix and solve it numerically Mm -hmm. There will be problem in pressure. Can you imagine the matrix structure? Let's let's imagine the two decays. Allow me to suggest that. We want to construct the solution vector as all the vx components y velocity components at all the nodes and then pressures at all the cells equals same right hand side the vector you might have some momentum sources uh, and here you, you certainly have got zeros because this one should discretize the the um, this constraint. Can you imagine? So, how would you? Where? Here. Yes. What would it be elsewhere? Something, something. Um, yeah, okay, so if you discretize the unsteady problem, then you will have some matrix representing the inertia. Uh, and the inertia would be represented by some mass matrix. Uh, then for the Y component, obviously the inertia for the Y component will be represented here. Then the next thing uh, is um, well, the how is um, how does the navier stokes equation in 2D looks like? Vx, Vx, Vx dx plus vy dv dx uh, dy equals let's say the incompressible case right um, so we have covered this one by saying it's some inertia matrix uh, well, probably divided by some time step uh, times Vx, okay? This one? No. Mm -hmm. These two need to coincide in the substantial derivative, but it's it's always applied to the, to the same component because it's the transported component. Uh, plus, you've got the convection matrix, which basically is well, this substantial derivative applied to Vx. You got minus well. Some matrix, let me call it in a way, applied to pressure uh, minus diffusion matrix applied to velocity. Uh, so typically, what we have got is plus C plus D, both convection and diffusion matrix is applied to the x velocity component. 
if you're writing the equation for the y velocity component, then everything goes here. Um, if you've got the turbulent flow, or if you've got the flow with, with variable viscosity, then we, you will additionally see that there is coupling, diffusive coupling between, between x and y components of velocity. Uh, and, and you will get some matrix. Um, I, will, I will not be very strict. Well, okay. Let's call it as X, as Y. And just, just believe me, I don't want to derive it right now. Just believe me that discretizing, discretizing the divergence, which is again like D, DX applied to something, plus D, DY applied to something, uh, is exactly the same as taking these matrices, but the transpose of them, that should be applied to just see to the x velocity component and applied to the y velocity component. And then the huge problem for many, many numerical solvers, linear solvers, is this block of zeros. Like if you can. Uh, if you know the Jacobi um, linear solver, then if you want to calculate the update, you've got the term 1 divided by AII, I, where AII I, I is, the, is the matrix uh, entry at the main diagonal. No, you can't divide by, by 0. So... Jacobi already fails. Gauss-Seidel already fails. Uh, successive over-relaxation already fails. Um, the um, conjugate gradient method. Exactly. Conjugate gradient method already fails because the, the matrix is not symmetric and positive defined, and it's not because of this convec convective term. Uh, B, conjugate gradient stabilized. Uh, could work, but actually fails. Uh, like, theoretically, it could work, but the convergence rate is so, so, so extremely low that it doesn't work. Um, generalized minimal residual solver works a bit but doesn't actually the same problem with the convergence rate uh, extremely huge problems because of that entry uh, it's something that is associated to to saddle point problems I mean, we found that's the boundary condition that especially is not even defined in the equation yeah yeah that's true you're right that if you don't define at some portion of the boundary, usually at some outflow uh, or somewhere inside. If you don't define the pressure, then, then the incompressible case does not have a unique solution whatsoever. That's right. But even if we define the, the pressure at some location inside or at the outflow, you still have got this block of zeros and you still have got these problems. Um, so if you're looking for any solvers that can that can handle this, uh, you should be you could be looking into optimization problems, optimization problems, and the keyword is saddle point. Subtle point problems. Uh, subtle point problems mean that generally, if you 
if you're solving the system of linear equations that can be solved, for example, by conjugate gradient method, then the, the, the idea in deriving the conjugate gradient method is that you define the quadratic optimization problem. Uh, like it's, I guess it's not even uh, quadratic, but it needs to be convex, I guess. In the conjugate grade, yeah, but when deriving the method, okay. you're defining the, the quadratic problem. Um, that in some, well, I can only draw in two dimensions, sorry for that. Uh, but this means that for the conjugate gradient method, you are defining a problem that can be represented as as a quadratic function uh, in, in, in both directions. Uh, and the solution that you're interested in is the minimum, is the extreme of this problem. But you can, if you've got a quadratic optimization problem with no constraints, you can calculate the derivatives. And by calculating the derivatives, you end up with the linear system of equations. And that's exactly what the conjugate gradient method solves. Uh, with the saddle point problems, the problem is the saddle point is something like you would have such a problem in one direction, but in the other direction, it's like that. And actually, you're interested in finding more or less this this point, which is mathematically extremely difficult to be done if you calculate the second order derivatives with respect to one to, to, to one direction, then you get positive sign. If you calculate it with respect to the other direction, you get negative sign. Very, very difficult to solve. How do we cope with that? We can split uh, solving the equations. Mm -hmm. One way. Have you got any idea how to solve this problem in MATLAB, um, despite all these problems? Backslash. Exactly. <laughs> Backslash will do the work. Um, what kind of solvers would work in this case? Backslash. <laughs> yeah, backslash, always. Or ML divide. <laughs> Sorry? Exactly, direct solvers would work. So um, direct solvers like, for example, Gaussian elimination would work. Um, what's, the problem with, what's the problem with direct solvers? Computationally extremely expensive. The Gaussian elimination, uh, the computational ex um, complexity and to the power of three. So you can handle maybe a couple of thousand equations, uh, not much, much more. The backslash operator in MATLAB can handle many, many more, but it's something more than Gaussian elimination. I think it's SVD or in uh, the backslash. Uh, I'm not sure. Might be. I'm not sure either. And I think that's why it's like so RAM consuming. Yeah, that's the, the other uh, problem, that the direct solvers, even if, you start, even if you start with a sparse matrix, then eliminating the entries in the subsequent rows may lead to you know, destroying the sparsity of the matrix. So they will be even more memory consuming. Uh, what's the other problem with the direct solvers? Not only memory um, like the cost and the computation cost is like uh, n to the power of three. Yeah, memory cost is also high. And the accuracy because of rounding. Exactly, the accuracy because of the error during all these operations accumulates. So the more equations you have the more operations you're doing, the, and so many times you're accumulating the error, 
then you're propagating back to, to, to solve the subsequent unknowns, and then the, then the error re accumulates extremely much. That's why iterative solvers, well, generally are, bet are better, but specifically with respect to this property are better because even if they do have some brand of errors, they, they improve, they lower the, or at least they should lower the round of errors in the next iteration and in the next iteration and so on and so on.